Hi there, welcome to the Pantheon Podcast. My name is Kagan, and this is Shannon. Hey, yeah. Today we're speaking with Gab. Would you like to introduce yourself? Or Gab? Um, hello. Um, yeah. Hi, Kagan and Shannon. Um, thank you for having me on today. Um, my name is Gabrielle Thompson. I'm from the east coast of the North Island, so I grew up there most of my life. Um, Papa Papa back to many places, but Tuhoi and Wairua are um, my mother and father's um, Tūranga Waiwai, so that's where I um, naturally um, have a pull to, so yeah. <laughs> so what is it that you're involved in? Uh, I guess one of the reasons why we're talking. Oh, um, yes, so... I got a lovely message from um, Shannon about uh, this weekend's protests on the 15th of October. And um, so we did have a protest on the 17th of September, and it was a march against mainstream media. We um, personally were at the one in Auckland coordinating where we left from Altia Square and went to TVNZ. Um, There was also one in Wellington and there was one in Christchurch. So we had three cities combining in unity against um, paid mainstream media and what they are doing um, to our people in the freedom movement right now especially, um, just to let them know that we're not, you know, we're not going to be silenced. You're not going to just lie about us and get away with it. We're here, we're going to stand and we're going to tell you that um, the truth is far from what you're printing. So um, this this Saturday, uh, we're doing a reoccurrence of that for mainstream media. At the moment, um, we're doing Altia Square again at 1pm for mainstream media march to TVNZ. Now that TVNZ and RNZ are merging, I think it's important that we speak up now and tell them that we're not going to have, you know, we're just not going to stand by and let things happen. We're going to speak up and you're going to hear our voices. Um, The other uh, city that's joining us is New Plymouth. So, they're going to be down at the Taranaki Daily News Building, uh, which is also known as Stuff. So they're going to be down there doing their thing. And um, at the moment, that's the only two places we've got combining. Okay. And there's also a um, protest against the police happening on the same day? Yeah. We're a bit mischief and we like to do things. Um, if we're going to do things, we, you know, we go, we've got to go all out. And again, looking at... Um, the police protests on the same day at 10 a.m. I think we've got six um, six places joining us in unity. And again, um, the police corporation are one of the enablers of this corrupt government and the protocols that they're pushing out. So in essence, the police, in my opinion, sorry, the police and the mainstream media are instrumental in the lies the corruption and the deceit that the corporate government is pushing out onto our people. It's a collaboration between the um, like distributors of information and the enforcers. Yeah, it really is. And, and that's what the scary thing is about it, is that they're teaming up. You know, we no longer have a voice as a people. We're getting told what to do. And if we don't listen, we're going to get punished for it. So... This is what's happening in New Zealand, and a lot of people are still asleep to it. And it's our job, I believe it's our responsibility, um, our calling to wake these people up. And right now, it is by any means necessary, but always in truth and love. We don't say that lightly. We come at you with truth and love and always will. Um, So, yeah. That's cool. I resonate with truth and love. Yeah, yeah. So, um... In terms of, like, if we just maybe focus on the first one, the the police protest, um, is that because of, like, one single event that's happened recently, or is it just a collection of events that you've seen happening maybe over the past couple of years that sort of led you to, to believe that there is something going on in the police force at the moment? Yeah, I think police corruption, as we know, has been around for many years. Um... But only recently, uh, being at Parliament grounds um, from February to March the 2nd, on March the 2nd, I witnessed something that I never believed I would see in my life. You know, it was total abuse of power. Um, I saw corruption on another level. Uh, The fact that it was hid by mainstream media, they didn't 
they didn't um, push out any of what happened when the police came through. They only focused on the protesters, per se. And, um, yeah, so I think for us now, uh, within the past, has it been eight months since we were wiped off Parliament grounds? I think since then the freedom movement have been targets. They have been targets of the police. I know of one man um, that I'm friends with. I was actually on the phone to. Uh, we were going to work out um, some sort of legal case against the mainstream media and how we could go about that as a way of solution. Um, within five minutes of the phone call, uh, four police officers turned up to his house, um, knocked on his door, told him he was under arrest. And being the peaceful man he was, he was just going to go with the officers, but I told him to ask them if they have a warrant for his arrest or court order for his arrest, so he did. Um, the officer in charge then proceeded to tell him he had no paperwork on him. And, um, yeah, so they came into his house, arrested him. He went because he's a peaceful man. And I then got a phone call after all of it happened, and they had no paperwork at the station either. So this is what they're doing Um in the, within the freedom movement, I've heard of other instances, but haven't confirmed it, that they are um, seeking us out as targets. Um, and we just have to make sure that we stay connected and make sure that these instances are widely spread so that we all know what's happening and they can't, you know, continue to do it undercover. That's what's happening is they just keep things all under wraps and, um, I think they're messing with the wrong people because we're not quiet. We're not quiet. We're going to be very loud and continue to be loud until they stop. So, What was it that he was um, being charged with? It was um, what they told him. It was sort of un unrelated to what he was doing in the freedom movement because he's, um, he's done legal cases in the high court uh, for 1080. He, he does a lot of legal cases against the system but it had nothing to do with that. It had something to do with his house. Sorry, brother, if you <laughs> watch this, but with his house and his um, ex-wife. And I think they were just using that as leverage to try so, and... Um, so that's what you think's well, happening. Um, these people that are within the freedom movement are being targeted and the police are using any means necessary to try charge them with anything just to get them. That's what I believe is happening, brother. And that day... That day when I was on the phone to him, it kind of confirmed it, that they're just after us and they're going to come after us and use any any sort of reason. Have you seen the documentary Fire and Fury? Well, I saw part of it and then it got a bit boring because I was like... <laughs> <laughs> That's great. It got a bit boring. That's great. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so much money on it and I'm, I was thinking, is this all you could produce? Like, come on. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's like a whole hour and a half of just like shit talking, basically. Yeah, and and you much. hear it like um the professionals that Paula Penfold is speaking with, they understand the way all of the stuff works, but they're only willing to apply it in the direction that serves them. I think that's what was most shocking to me about it, anyway. Hmm. Always, I think I think it doesn't matter how eloquently you speak. If you're not talking the truth, we can see right through you. So yeah. that's all I thought. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Or if you're um being like blatantly hypocritical, applying one thing like what Kate was saying, one thing to one side, understanding it fully, like how people can be affected by because what they were saying is basically all of this content online produced by I guess people like you and me and other people in the in the freedom movement, um, that that was basically brainwashing people. But then if they're going to apply it in that case, then what about all the stuff produced by mainstream media then? What about all the content on TV, like ads, everything, everywhere? Wouldn't that be brainwashing people as well? Like if we're going to start looking that in depth into communications online um, through digital media, then you've got to accept that it's going to be happening on both sides then. If you've got, they, a mission, they didn't. They didn't actually. They didn't go into that at all. And I've seen. I haven't seen people who are talking about that. You'd think if someone had a mission, the first thing they would do would be to question themselves, to make sure that they're not falling into the the like problems that they're trying to resolve. Mm. Well, obviously, it was. A, it's a deflection thing, right? 
Yeah, you know, yeah. If you're guilty of something and you don't actually want to admit it, you're going to turn it around on whoever you're targeting and make out like it's them. So I mm. get it. I mean, we get it. It's it's all part of the psychological warfare that they're pushing on us. I mean, if they like Shannon said, if they want to talk about brainwashing, they've been brainwashing us for years or trying to, but for some of us, it just didn't work. And <laughs> very sorry. <laughs> I think especially at the the point that COVID hit, I think that was one of the biggest wake-up calls for a lot of people that what's happening is bullshit yeah it was bloody scary too i mean if i didn't have the spiritual intuition that i did i wouldn't have woken up as quick as i did and um again you don't expect your loving government to be lying to you especially about a virus and the fact that it could you know potentially kill you and then going out and enforcing a so-called vaccine that actually does exactly that. And um, so this is what I had trouble with. I, I fought, you know, with myself as to, is this really happening? Like, if this is happening, this is big. This is something we've never seen before. I don't think they've seen this in history either. It's a it's a total takeover. And so that woke me right up. And um, I'm glad it did because we're here fighting now and um, we're going to continue to fight until until the very end so how did you feel at the start because we were talking with um Jacqueline Alkington she was standing from there here in Fokatani we were talking to her yesterday and she was saying that um the fear did kind of set in to begin with the fear about the virus and what it could do um how did you feel when it first started being um sort of broadcast like around the first lockdown and I think it was March 2020 mm, definitely um a bit afraid, but not for myself per se, for my children. I do have um, four children, so my my fear was for them and what could potentially happen. But then, um, then just doing doing your own research, this is where it comes in. You do your own research, you see what's been put out overseas, you know, you just follow follow the facts, you know. It's not, it wasn't just happening here in New Zealand, it was happening globally. And, and it was hitting hitting them first. So we actually got like the backlash of it. So that's how we could come into all of the information we did. And and that's the beautiful thing about it. But yeah, it, was, it wasn't it was fear for myself or, uh, or you know, fear to die. Um, it was just, yeah, fear for my children, first and foremost. Yeah, so um, you would have felt quite relieved then when you, I, I would assume doing your own research and that you found out that it's a, the um, effect of COVID on children isn't actually all that bad or isn't actually all that dangerous. Yeah, definitely. And um, I'm, I'm actually proud to say that I am unvac- well, unvac- I say vaccinated very lightly, um, <laughs> but I haven't been jabbed and I made sure that my kids weren't either. So they attended parliament with me. Um, I wasn't um, letting them go to school at that time because they were sort of enforcing it in the schools and I didn't want my my children to feel threatened, oh, not threatened, just coerced into doing something just because they were, you know, making it a, a thing in the schools. So, yeah, it, it's, it, was a, it was a good journey, um, even for my children. You have to, that's the thing, being honest with our kids about everything, and I was. I told them no, because it's not an actual vaccine, it's poison. <laughs> you know, I was telling my kids this stuff and, and then I would, you know, show them where to go and look for themselves so they were informed, you know, firsthand and not just through what I was saying. So my kids did their own research too, which was great. And we weren't just seen as brainwashing them. It was actual firsthand information they were researching. Because mm. the same type of stuff that happened um... – in wider society was happening in the schools they eh? like if kids weren't getting vaccinated they weren't able to go to sports events um sort of i guess like what you were saying peer pressure so then on the other side of that you have the alienation that comes from that where you've got kids that have been um made to believe that if they hang out with other kids that aren't vaccinated they're going to get sick like all the same stuff that was happening i guess in the adult population was happening with the kids as well and and fear over like having to wear masks all day, like kids getting. I guess you would have some kids um rejecting other kids that didn't want to wear masks. Like you've got all of those dynamics playing at the same time. So is that one of the reasons why you just decided that you weren't going to send your kids to school while all that was happening? 
Yeah, I just could see the um you could well, a lot of us could see the bigger agenda in it and yeah, like you said, peer pressure is everything these days. I mean our kids you know, and their friends that you know, they'll go, Oh, have you got your jab? you know, and um my kids will be like, No, we haven't and I would just try and encourage them and and it was hard, but but then I remember one day my son showed me a TikTok video of one of his friends in hospital with a heart condition after he received the jab. So that um, was a big, oh, it was at the time it was really sad. But for my son to see it in real life, you know, that day he said, thank you, mum. Thank you for not letting us get that. And I said, of course, I'm your protector. I wouldn't, you know. I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna try and save you from whatever I can, <laughs> but yeah. So have your ha- um kids had COVID? Um, I believe we had it at Parliament. Uh, I believe um our whole team had it, and I only know this because when my children went back to their father after Parliament, um, they were positively I think they were positive cases, so. Um, their father wasn't worried though. That's the great thing. He just said, "Oh, it's just the flu, you know. It's not even, not even what they're saying it is." And I was worried about his baby, and no, he was just like, "Oh, it's nothing. Like I don't even know why they're making a big deal." And I said, "Right, like they're they're making out like the, the virus is just going to come in and kill us all." It was like total brainwashing, total total fear and panic on our people for nothing. I think and they the- should be ashamed of it. Yeah. I think one of the biggest things is that the government seems to pretend that they can control it. So it's like, like some people die from COVID. Not very often, but some people do. Some people have side effects from COVID and it's like, well, it sort of is what it is. But to pretend that they can control it, like we locked down at the borders, it still got in. Like in a situation where something can't be controlled like that, the best thing you can do is adapt to it. So why are we not promoting... Uh, like healthier lifestyle choices, um, other mm. medications that can actually help either along with or instead of the vaccine. And this stuff just isn't being isn't being sort of pervaded by the media. And that's what I find shocking. I think that's one of the main reasons why I've lost faith in the media is that they're they're all on this one um one way solution instead of looking at different ways that things can be resolved or helped. Like even just mm. to lose weight, even just to to go for a walk every day, to get some fitness, fitness and um, get some fresh air, uh, get in the sun so you get vitamin D, like all that sort of stuff. You don't see much of that coming out, and if they do, it's always on the back end of it. It's always like uh, it's after. You know what I mean? Well, that was classified as misinformation at the start of the pandemic. I know that the disinformation projects. Um, Kate Hanna, she. She recorded this video that was shown at the um, World Health Organization because um, what they believe is that there's an infodemic going on at the moment, um, basically in conjunction with the actual pandemic. So the infodemic is just too much information, particularly false or misleading information. And in her video, she cited basically alternative health advice, so vitamin D, getting healthy. Basically, if you boost your own immune system, then you're going to be able to fare better against covid that was put into the misinformation category. Wow. So basically anything that stopped somebody from going and getting the vaccine was considered misinformation. Even just relying on your own body to fight it and doing the best you can to make your body as strong as possible was considered misinformation. So true. And um, when people were first uh, suggesting ivermectin um you know it was totally Ooh, this shunned. video is this video is gonna get taken down now for sure <laughs> <laughs> as soon as you drop the ivermectin <laughs> but uh like no yeah, it will yeah, still like be the... it will still be up on rumble that's all good <laughs> yeah but it's, it's just that fact and now the health website has it up on their page you know and it's it just goes to show that it's it's all some sort of money-making scheme that's all it was and and we know that we can see it because that's why they pushed this jabs as much as they did and like you said not pushing a healthier way of living 
not pushing eat your fruits and vegetables. You know, they were giving fifty dollar KFC vouchers if people came in and got it. This is this is what they were doing, and um, I've even spoken with people that were in what is it called when they got COVID? They got put into this. Um, it was like isolation, okay. and yeah. they were fed like pies and and fizzy drinks, and it just it, re- it it didn't make sense. But then, when you look at it, I suppose from a corporate level, because that's what our government is—a corporation. Um, it was just some sort of business deal. It wasn't about the people or our health or um, alternative medicines that could possibly help. Because if it was, we would have all been given vegetables. The whole, you know, the whole of New Zealand would have been given a box of veggies here. You know, learn to eat healthier, build your immune system up. That's where it's at. Our natural immune system is where it's at, and we've proved it. I mean, not being jabbed, you know, I'm. We're still alive. We're still healthy. I think it's like it's officially been proven that your natural um, antibody response to COVID is just as good as the vaccine, if not slightly better. Yeah. So if you get it, if you don't get the vaccine, then you get COVID and recover from it. You're actually, um, if like not the same, you could be possibly even better protected when you get it again. See, I remember hearing this um, when basically when we were making the decision whether or not we were going to get the vaccine, we were hearing this. And um, I think that was probably one of the main reasons why we made the decision we made to not get it. Yeah. But um, basically everyone that I'd talked to about that kind of thought I was crazy. And that just goes to show. Um, and now that now that like, as I was saying before, on the back end of all of this, the, the information's coming up. Yeah, because that's um, not, it's not misinformation or disinformation. Like, you go onto the CDC's website, and they've, they've published studies. Like, you go and watch Peak, um, Peak Prosperity, so Chris Madison, he's looked into all of this, and it's been confirmed through studies that if you get COVID without getting vaccinated, you basically have the same immunity as somebody that got vaccinated. And yet they were telling us that it was like a pandemic of the unvaccinated. Like it was all the unvaccinated people that were going to kill everybody else. And it's like, well, I, I could never understand that, eh? Because if you got the vaccine, aren't you supposed to be protected? So what does it matter at all what an unvaccinated person does? Exactly. Like that in itself never made sense to me. And it's making less sense now with these new studies coming out, basically saying that there is no difference. There's hardly any difference at all between a vaccinated person and an unvaccinated person that's got COVID. Yep. And and again, going into the so-called vaccine, you know, um, is it really a vaccine? Like, we, we don't actually know what the contents of this stuff is. And a lot of what we're seeing now, say vaccine injuries, um, we know it. We know it was poison, and it wasn't a cure. Um, the mass rollout of it just proved everything for me you they wouldn't be pushing something so hard and so fast um unless there was a bigger agenda behind it so i gotta be careful what i say too because i don't want to go into conspiracy theory but um i think you know it's just to me it was just all a coup and i still think it was all a coup and you know there's no good i find it crazy that we're sitting here worried about what we're going to say like, we're sitting in our land at home. It looks like you're in your car and we're having a conversation and we're going to publish this later, probably later today or tomorrow. But we're worried about what we're saying. Mm. Like, that in itself tells me things have gone way too far. Does that not just, does that not sound like Nazi Germany or um, the Soviet Union? Like, the fear <laughs> yeah. to be able to speak openly. Well, after um, Arden's UN agenda speech, you know, we, yes. we're, pretty, <laughs> we're pretty much being targeted as terrorists. So <laughs> I, I just, yeah, I, I now I make sure that I don't speak out anything uh, that they can target me for, only because I know all of us have a lot of work to do. So um, I put I put the cause before my opinion, and I'd rather... I'll stick on the safe side for now, definitely. Yeah. But there's, like, this part of me that admires, like, um, counterspin media. Mm. 
because I there's like a, there is a part of me that just goes like you know f it like who cares like just speak whatever you want to say post it wherever you want to share it with as many people as you want to you know what I mean like, yeah because it's like what's the worst that can happen we're wrong and then as long as we're approaching things with truth and with love then we will be corrected and we will learn. But if we don't have the ability to say something wrong, then we don't have the ability to learn. What what are schools going to be like when this top-down structure moves into schools? What, are kids going to put their hands up? Oh, yeah, uh, this is the answer. And then it's like, no, you're wrong. Detention, like, like enforcement. Like, you, what, you're not allowed to be wrong? It's, it's a like a human right. Mm. to be able to speak and be wrong that's what free speech is but i i understand what you're saying too like what you're saying you've you got a lot of work to do and then when you have a look at what's happened to calvin alps and hannah um spires is it or spears spears i think yeah 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 you have a look at what's happened to them like what you're saying about your friend as well with the, the police coming and visiting him as well and dragging him off it's like it is an intimidation tactic to make us feel the way that we do right now, where we we are careful about what we say. Yeah, I, I would never say I'm afraid of them because I'm not. But um, just just very careful now. I tread very very carefully. And with with Hannah and Calvin, like Calvin's always been straight up. That you know, the first time I talked to him um, when we were organising the convoy because I um, coordinated the interviews and. Even Brett Power for New Plymouth when he served the case against Andrew Little at that time, um, I was able to speak with um, him and Hannah. I think that was the first time we had conversated, but he's just always been um, straightforward. You know, he gives his true and honest opinion, and that's what I respect about him, even though it's a bit out there for me. But, you know, that's how he thinks and feels. And and ain't we about the truth? You know, if we if we are in this freedom movement, we stand for truth, right? And And we stand for our truth. So... Whatever, yeah, you're right. Whatever our truth is, we should be able to speak it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, if it's not, if it's not right, we'll find out later and apologize for it. That's just who we are as human beings. Yeah, well, like I know our Bill of Rights Act here in New Zealand isn't like the Constitution in America, but it was set up to make sure that those rights were always protected. And there's freedom of expression in there, but there's also freedom of thought, which is freedom to have your own beliefs and thoughts and ideas about things, even if you're wrong. So both of those things, not just freedom of expression, but the freedom of thought are being attacked at the moment. Because you, you're you not allowed to have certain thoughts now. If you have certain thoughts and ideas about things then you are a right-wing extremist misogynistic <laughs> you're just a racist. bad person you're just deemed as a bad yeah. person you're That's evil it. yeah do you, what do you think about um the people that are pushing this agenda do you think that they've got that that that, that potentially they've got an idea in mind that they're actually striving for what's right do you do, or do you but like but they could be potentially wrong. Or do you think that there, that there is just like a group of people that's trying to make things worse? I remember reading um, Agenda 2021, I think about eight years ago, and it was a 360-odd page document um, that they worded very, very well. But when you look deep into it, it was all about sustainability and and it went into how the world could potentially be overpopulated in the in the near future so they had to keep that you know they had to you know stop the population levels from growing um because we'd run out of food you know and so i saw in that depopulation that's what i saw i saw that they had to get rid of people or else it wouldn't fit their agenda but they didn't quite say that they say it in in a very a very um, particular politically way correct, <laughs> a politically That's correct right. way. But yeah, you, you can see, you you can read through the lines and everything that was happening, including 1080. You know, all of that it was just coming into play, into line with their whole agenda. And I believe that that the pushback, you know, because I was involved in pushback in 2018 uh, against 1080. I believe every single time we were pushing back at them, it slowed that agenda down. Or it might have halted certain plans. So that's why I think it's now gone from 2021 to 2030, because 
whatever they were planning, they just couldn't get it. You know, there were too many pushing back, and they didn't. Um, I because it's a business plan. I believe it's a they they're businessmen, so it's a business plan, and they didn't put us into the risk management part of it. So we 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 are like the irritation in there. <laughs> And yeah, yeah. And you could you could see that too because if you um if you have a look at what's happening now with basically a global censorship operation in place, um, with like uh internet safety codes coming into effect that um seek to reduce the amount of hate speech, misinformation, disinformation online, and then you also have countries around the world updating their uh, media regulatory codes, like what we're doing here in New Zealand at the moment. It's like they didn't account for what was going to happen. They didn't account for the fact that people were just going to keep on speaking their minds and they were going to do their own research. Um, I guess they never considered the uh, risk that the internet posed to their plans. And now they've had to take a step back, reconsider, and they have to enforce a censorship first before they're going to be able to, I guess, uh, restart the brainwashing. <laughs> because it's going to be very hard to, to convince people that their agenda is the right one to follow when you've got so many people online basically saying no, this isn't correct. Yeah. So that yeah, that kind of does fit what you were saying. It's like they um they didn't account for people standing up and now they've had to find new ways to try to shut those people down. Yeah, and they're desperate. You can see it. Even with her, her whole UN speech, you know saying freedom of speech is considered weapons of war. And I was thinking, isn't that a conspiracy theory right there? <laughs> like, is he allowed to say that without any facts or evidence? It just made no sense. But so you can see how scared they are because they know there's a big pushback and people are creating solutions in the background. I know that they're aware of some of these things happening i know that they're tracking us they can't say that they're tracking us because i'll be breaching our privacy and that's illegal but um i know that they're listening in our on our calls and stuff like that it's it's pretty evident but again speak the truth i, I just want to encourage everybody to keep being who you are never be afraid never be afraid and and like even if you don't have anyone to call on call on me like i'll give anybody my number if they need help if they feel alone in this movement, especially in the freedom movement, if you feel alone and you like you have no one, ring me up. Ring yeah. me up and. And now I would say that um, if they really do believe that we're wrong, like if for some reason we've just all got the wrong idea about what's happening, then the, the way that they're approaching trying to re-educate people, trying to um, I guess calm people down, is the wrong way. Because all they keep doing, like stuff with all of the um, articles about all the different candidates that were conspiracy theorists, um, the, you've got places like the Disinformation Project, FACT, um, and other organizations in New Zealand that are just targeting these groups, like the Freedom Movement, Voices for Freedom, like all these different um, groups that are focusing on basically like the same things. They're just targeting them. And I guess... Um, just pushing them further. Yeah, they're, the, they're demonizing the them. They're not. Yeah. They're not attempting to rehabilitate anybody. They're yeah. not attempting to actually help. They're, they're, it seems like all they're doing is demonizing and pushing out. Yeah, because um, how are you meant to re rebuild democracy? I guess like bring the country back together when you're just constantly um, oppressing and I guess hurting a certain group of people just mm. because of their beliefs and thoughts like how are we what's the country going to look like in like another five years of this continuing we're going to have such a big divide between those who believe the mainstream media believe the government and those who don't we're going to be like america i guess so yeah <clears throat> but like what's their plan then like if they if we are wrong then approach it in a way that we can be shown like what you were saying through um, you do everything that you do through like love well what is their approach then because it doesn't it doesn't to me it doesn't seem like that's that's their core value that they're upholding with what they're doing 
it looks more like anger and resentment and um, fear and fear on their part for people actually speaking their minds and, and, and telling other people what they think. Yeah, it's bullying too. I mean, they're condoning bullying and they've been doing this since the whole vaccination schedule's been um, started being pushed. I mean, our own Prime Minister pretty much said, you know, if you're not vaccinated, then you're not one of us, sort of, you know, just in her own words. And yeah, yeah. When I saw that, I was like, wait, isn't the enemy here the virus? You're making it about the people who choose not to get the so-called vaccine. You know, and and the virus. She was. Oh, sorry, I don't know how to explain it right now, but no, I think I, I get what you're saying. It's like yeah, we were the, the virus. You know? The virus is meant to be <laughs> yeah. the, the virus is meant to be the enemy, not yes. your people. You're meant to guide your people, and if people in the community don't want to go through with something that is openly spoken of as a choice, it's a choice. You don't have to get it. Um, then why demonize that group? If the virus is the problem, then the community should have been brought together in a way to protect those who want to get the vaccination and those who don't want to get the vaccination. Mm -hmm. But I see what you mean, especially with the bullying thing. Like, uh, one of the ways that Shannon and I used to uh, critique or to discern um, information that can be trusted is by looking at the source and looking at where the contradictions exist in their messages. So... You can't, like, have this goal and this goal if they're opposed to each other. So it's like the government says, like, we don't want to bully, we don't want to harass, we don't want, we want to have, like, a healthy, safe society. And yet, as soon as things don't go their way, they resort straight back to bullying. And it's, it's shocking because it's like, with the government putting forward that um, peaceful idea and then bullying people that um, wanted to exercise their uh, freedom... How are those people meant to trust that the government does want peace then? If the government wants peace and they want safety and security and they want a healthy nation, why are they not acting in a way that brings that about? Because the information's there. We've, we've got like, how many years of psychology has there been to analyze people's um, behavior, emotions, thoughts, the way they, um, that behavior develops and changes when interacting with other forces. We know so much of this shit now. And what do they do when, um, people are protesting? They turn the sprinklers on and blast music at them. Yeah. And they thought that that would have, would affect them. I mean, playing, I think it was Baby Shark over and over again, just, you know, instead of irritating people, it made them dance. So... I think that's what probably peed them off more was all of their attempts at trying to, you know, make make the people on the ground angry. Actually, they just found a, a way around it and, and solutionized, you know, <laughs> strategized around it and came back. You it, know, it really stings, eh? Hey, when you um when you don't like someone and then they then they laugh and smile at you. Yeah. <laughs> it really stings. Yeah. <laughs> oh, it's funny. Yeah. But no, I think um. The mainstream media protests that you're um, organizing at the moment, I'm really keen to get up there. Um, we're really keen to get up there, see what it's all about, interview people, get their thoughts on it, um, get their ideas about like what do they think is happening at the moment because I've seen it. Like I've seen the massive shift in the way that the media is reporting everything at the moment. Um, you feel excluded pretty much like you go into stuff and i don't resonate with like 99 percent of the stories that they post on there because there's like an element running through it where they're basically they think that they can decide what our moral values are now as a people instead of uh -huh. actually instead of actually just i guess representing a um broad spectrum of ideas and thoughts and beliefs and that they're basically just like this is the way that society needs to be now and anything that deviates from that, they'll run a negative story on it. And anything that promotes it, they'll they'll run like a positive story on it. And it's just that black and white constantly of just like, here's a here's a really good thing, here's a bad thing, here's a good thing, here's a bad thing. But it's not it's not really about they're not focusing on the bad things happening as in like the crime rate. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like things that are actually happening to us here in New Zealand, like to the actual people living here. 
they're focusing more on people's words and thoughts and ideas and intentions. And I, I definitely think that that is, that's part of what you were saying. Like the control that the government is seeking is almost like being implemented through the police and through the mainstream media. Yeah, it's, it's, it is kind of scary when you think about it because, you know, mainstream media goes out to the mass of New Zealand. And so they are being brainwashed into thinking a certain way about us. And that's, that's what's dangerous for us because if we say we're freedom fighters, you know, and all they've read is all this bad stuff that isn't necessarily true, you know, the, the, it's like a, I don't know, what, like secondhand information hate, if you want to say that, you know, they just mm, feel in mm. a certain way because of what they believe is true because of what's been printed and, and pushed out on a mass scale through um, mainstream media. So um, I just I just think, you know, for us in the freedom movement, we need to find a solution um, of what's happening in regards to the paid mainstream media and the corrupt police because if we don't, um, I think it's going to get very, very, very dangerous for us. And they can conceal anything. You know, they have the power to do that. If if the police are working with them and the mainstream media are working with them, then we are in danger. And so, yeah. mm. we'll and our only make... solution at the moment is to speak online. But what we're going to do within the next year or so, when new laws come in that will basically hold us legally accountable if we post mis or disinformation online, like it's it's getting to that point where. The individual will be fined or um, prosecuted if they post what I guess um, the government deems as misinformation. So if this is like what you're saying, we do need to find another solution because the only one we really have at the moment is speaking online. And if that starts getting regulated, then where are we going to be able to talk? Where are we going to be able to share our thoughts? because the mainstream media won't share them for us. They won't even bother to interview us, and if they do, they'll misrepresent it. Huh. Yeah, well, in the um, Fire and Fury document, I watched the interview they done with um, Paula Penfold after that, and she pretty much said in that interview, you know, um, they don't deserve a right of reply. You know, I, yeah. don't, I don't want to give them one. I was thinking in my head, isn't that your job as a as an investigative, I think that's how you say it, but as a journalist, to actually get both sides of the story, otherwise yeah, yeah. you just spread out the gossip. And she like was saying the... that um, they don't need a right of reply because all of their thoughts and views have already been publicised. And I'm not sure who it was, but it was somebody within the freedom movement that basically said, "Well, the people that are going to be watching Fire and Fury and sort of, I guess, agreeing with the narrative that Paula Penfold was putting forward won't go out and won't go and seek their videos out." won't watch enough of them to understand what their actual thoughts and opinions are. So there needed to be a right of reply in that documentary. Not, oh, well, you can just find them online and just do your own research. Like, hey, they're telling us not to. They're telling us to be careful and not go watch all that stuff because no, they're brainwashing. They're, they're telling so. us to do our research, but they're telling us to follow the research that they present. Yeah. But I agree with what you're saying. Like, there should have been a right of reply there. Because how... How else is it an actual correct, like, solid piece of journalism? Definitely. And only putting up, like you said, like, partial moments in time instead of the full story, it just it just makes no sense. And again, like I said, watching that documentary kind of bored me. Um, we sat through the whole thing. And, <laughs> yeah, the graphics and the sound effects were great, but the, the substance of the story was really, really boring, so I just switched mm. off. I noticed they really tried to apply, like, an apocalyptic feel to it. Like, the first scene with the train, and it's dark, and everything's empty, and the the sound, and, you know, everything. And then that, the scene where everything went orange, and they had, like, all these miniatures, and, like, yeah, uh, it's propaganda. That, that's the only way to yep. describe it. Yep. They actually, um, I just watched a Vice documentary a couple of days before, it's only a very short video. Um, and they were talking about conspiracy theories in this video, and they use exactly the same setup. They put the videos up on billboards and that while the person was walking through the street. So it looked like stuff just stole that format off of them. <laughs> oh. But yeah, um, so what's the, what's the plan on Saturday? 
because we, yeah, so... we'd really love to cover both if we could be there early for the the police protests and then move on to the mainstream media protests yeah hopefully so so in auckland um we'll be meeting at auckland central so apparently it's moved from where it originally was it's moved to 13 to 15 um rose hill and it's located in freeman's bay i do have a post up on facebook i don't have a um, page set for these protests but um if you look up auckland central they should easily find the address to go to and we'll be there at 10 a.m in the morning so we'll probably be there setting up just a little bit earlier before everybody comes but 10 a.m is the set time for the protest and we'll only be there till probably lunchtime. uh the one heading that police protest name is Steve Evans so he's head of Families for Justice and he's done these police protests before so I made sure I got someone on board that was experienced because I'm not going to go into some um, into something and not knowing what I'm doing so he's got um, the document on Brooker versus the New Zealand police so it's all got to do with the Bill of Rights um, Brooker won that case so if anyone wants to look that up that's um, very good information to uh, read and absorb and um, I'm going to send it out to all our coordinators. Uh, we are potentially going to email the police stations that we are going to set up at beforehand. We're going to email them that case, the Brooker versus New Zealand police case, just to remind them. Um, and that's what Stephen said we should do. And then on the day, he's going to serve that document to the police um, before we start, um, because our right, right to protest at the police stations is all in that document so um they're just reminded of it and um yeah so we'll be leaving there at lunchtime then 1 a.m um we'll be set up at altia square hopefully we can bring the people over from the police station to altia square to join in with us also and there we'll have speeches definitely anyone wanting to get up and speak you don't have to have a a big name in the freedom movement we just want to hear from people who have a story to tell. I want everyone's voice to be heard, um, even if you feel like, you know, you're not that important or you are. Like, I just want everyone to know that you're important, you know, especially in this movement. You, Every single one of us is important to the truth getting out there. So if you would like to speak, um, please let me know. Um, we will definitely be marching from there to TVNZ again, um, going back to the merger between um, them and RNZ happening, I think that's a important part we need to focus on also. And um, yeah, so far that's all we've got planned. So, <laughs> no, that sounds really good. Yeah, yeah. So our plan is to basically just record as much as we can. Um, we'll have our camera set up. Uh, you're making a rig today for it, eh? Yeah, I'm gonna build like a camera rig so I can carry it around easy with like a microphone on the end and stuff. We'll see how it goes. <laughs> yeah, it yeah. might look a bit ugly. <laughs> <laughs> Just get some black spray paint and do it up. Yeah, yeah. Um, so yeah, so we'll be seeking to record as much as we can, so you get some um, good clear footage with the camera. And then we've also got um, some live streaming that we want to do and some interviews as well. So we'll try to do the live streams. We'll have them up, um, and then we'll also take all that footage from the event and maybe post a couple of videos about that as well once we get back on monday we'll start doing some editing and put that all together so awesome yeah looking forward to meeting you in person and also thank you for allowing me to do this again um i felt i actually feel very comfortable so i'm getting used to it and um nice <laughs> yeah we're getting there eh yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> slowly <laughs> but still sometimes when we t when we um stop the recording that we're like ah oh, did we sound like we actually knew what we were talking about or <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's definitely me i'm gonna watch i'm definitely gonna watch this back and oh my gosh I, <laughs> I, I think you'll be happy with it i think you'll be happy with it you've done really well <laughs> yeah, yeah yeah really well thank you Okay, thanks heaps. Um, hopefully we'll be able to catch up with you on Saturday. Saturday? Oh, yeah, cool. Yeah. No, Saturday. We yep. Oh, and Tim will be there too because we're staying with Tim when we go up. So um, I think he's going to be tagging along as well. So. A lot of mischief that one. So. Yep. Mm. <laughs> yeah, I've seen the video of him waking up his kid with the Yui boom. <laughs> it's pretty cool. Yeah. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for joining us. I uh, hope you have a yep. good one. We'll catch up with you sometime. Thank yous. No worries. Right. See you later. See ya. Bye.